Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So we have had uh, very beautiful, very nice uh, interactions about product and technology uh, in terms of water conservation, in terms of sustainability. And now here we are uh, talking about uh, information technology. And there are a couple of points that came across that uh, while we have got islands of information being created across the entire supply chain, who is going to stitch them together and create some insights which are wonderful, which are which are, which would make business sense? So I will try to cover uh, what we have to say in this regard. So it's in your genes is what uh, the topic of the seminar is, and in fact, for Data Techs, the organization that I represent. Textile has been in our genes. When I say textiles, many things come to our mind. The way, the very nature of this business is, we have core and fashion businesses. So we have some styles which are never out of the fashion. We have certain styles which are continuously reinvented, re, uh, 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 which are which needs to be uh, agile. We have to be nimble to create and turn around these styles. We have this immense, immensely different concept of clubbing and splitting across the entire supply chain. Be it spinning, let us say, where we blend multiple fibers together, create yarn. Then we blend multiple yarns together, create a warp sheet. Then we have multiple warps in case of terries, etc., where we club the warp sheets again, create a fabric. Come to dyeing and processing, we split them. We dye them differently. Again, come to finishing, we club them. So this is a very unique form, uh, phenomenon which happens in our industry where we club and split and while we are doing so, we have to keep track, the integrity about the customer order from start to end, from the forecast to the actual delivery. Let us come to the manufacturing, the way we manufacture our product. We have a lot of manufacturing, we create batches, we manufacture them, we cost them around at the batches, we cost our production orders, we cost the garment orders, we cost the fabric orders. We also have line manufacturing like more of assembly structure, right? We also have unit manufacturing. So the point is, the kind of variability that we have in the way we accept the order, in the way we manufacture order, order and in the way we deliver the particular order. We also have batch and continuous processes. We have recipe manufacture, uh, recipes. Recipes again a unique phenomena where we are calculating multiple dyes and chemicals, auxiliaries, recipes within a recipe, and the point that water has to be uh, counted in uh, the calculation of uh, the cost for a recipe, right? So that is another component that adds to the complexity of the uniqueness that we have in textiles. We have in-house and external manufacturing process because we have fashion, we are into fashion, we have not to bolna ni se ko, right? Order to lena hi So we take orders and then we manufacture outside because if I am not able to do, let us say, jardozi, still I take the order and I do it outside. We have a lot of uh, job worker available. So we are in the process where we <coughs> go out, we do external manufacturing also, we manage internal manufacturing also. And again here also we have to keep complete track of our production right from the customer order till the delivery. And when I say track of production that is in the form of material, in the form of costs, in the form of quality, in the form of all the other parameters. Quality levels. Quality levels the way we manage in textiles where we can manufacture one same product across multiple qualities which can have different different uh, different price points right one fabric can produce multiple fabrics now that's again unique in the, in the form of manufacturing where a same input material can create multiple output materials and all of them can be costed separately all of them can have different names we manufacture one sample we, we manufacture one bulk product and we sell different in different brand names to different customers for different price points Again, a unique thing that we have in textiles. And on top of it, obviously, costing. The way we cost our product, right from the sub entire supply chain, right from fiber to garment, and n number of processes in between where we have multiple plants in multiple uh, states, sometimes in multiple countries, where we have different valuation methods, where we have different kind of machinery that we employ, and hence the cost that we have per pick is different in, let us say, in South India in, and in North India. Within South India, if I have plants which, which are running on, let us say, uh, DGs, and diesel generators, they have a different cost structure than the plants which are running on state electricity. So, while we have all this core and fashion, clubbing and splitting going on, different kind of orders coming and going, we have to have 
a solution which makes it possible for us to assimilate this data and make sense of it. If textiles is unique, denim, there is no parallels for denim, right? We have been discussing since morning. Within textiles, again, denim is very, very unique in its, in, in its own way. The nature of orders that we have, we were talking about rope, the kind of lens that we have, we can't produce less than 8,000, right? And, and as Subir sir mentioned that, we start with one lot, we have a medium and then we have a tail. Very different than other, even textile processes, right? Rope and slasher is, is the same example where for the shorter lens I have slashers and all. We have wash and unwash programs which are again very, difficult, very different from the normal textiles. We have common warps, again very common in uh, denim, where I have same warp, right? And I have different wefts, again the same input material can create multiple output materials and all of them can have different costs and different deliveries. And the product variability is also very high. We have different kind of denims. We have selvage denim. We have denims with multiple blends. We have denim with multiple characteristics. Come to come to the jeans part of it. We have high fashion and core. Uh, Jana sub showed the uh, embroidered garment in the start, and then we had uh, knitted uh, denim also, and obviously our woven denims are all all there. So this variability is going to be there. Though we are in textiles, within textiles, we are in denim, we still are going to have all these variabilities we are going to come and drop in in our normal business processes. Fabric shared grouping was one of the topics that we talked about, right? Uh, Ramsar mentioned that who are going to connect these mills who have this data, immense amount of data at a role level, at a batch level, to give it to the garmenters who can then use it judiciously, effectively and create something which is less costly which is a rather which reduces the waste and then we have dry and wet finishings again this is very different than what other textile or other uh, garment industry has so in in this gist of things what we have we have it solutions coming across and i'm coming to the point where uh, there are text organizations that i represent we have it solutions who are kind of ready-made right a chest a drawer a shelves and they are out there you buy it use it and they are good for that we have all these solutions which are either locally created maybe uh, in tirupur in Coimbatore, in ludhiana they are awesome for that particular product for that particular process right now think about vertical expansions for forward integrations or backward integrations these products say hey i can't do that because i'm only a chest i can't do that right i can't on the security side, on technology side, there are limitations because though they are good for that particular product, that particular segment, when it comes to technology and security adoptions, these, organ this, these solutions are not that good. On the other side, we have certain solutions which are generic, generic to the extent where they are built bottoms up, right? They are wooden logs. You can do anything out of it, but then the implementation cycle time is huge. The kind of understanding that a product needs and we talked about uniqueness of our textile industry of our denim industry so unique to understand to make these organizations understand what i mean by a thread and a yarn a warp and a weft and ep and peep and a cover factor and limp and that textile right and time is not what we have right with data techs we are a 30 years old company working in only textiles and apple industry with 450 plus customers across 45 countries and 200 plus consultants working out of multiple offices. As an organization, we are headquartered in Switzerland, having offices in Italy where the lab is, then we have offices in Israel where uh, support desk is there and then other offices in India. We have, we have been here since 1996. In 19, uh, 2019, we have started our APAC, Asia Pacific operations, where we are taking care of multiple uh, geographies from South Africa to Australia and everything between. The, coming to the denim part of it, we have got customers across the globe, Beximco being one of our early customers. Uh, so, okay, coming to the jeans part of it. As an organization, Jadex started in 1987 with AS400 technology, IBM servers uh, with uh, AS400 uh, platform. And now we are having a web-based platform. So we have also evolved, the genes have evolved, where from the scratch the product has been rewritten for 
only for this textile and apparel industry. There are various aspects that we can talk about when, while we are having a look at uh, the screen. We are the way we define the product, the way we define our production capacities, the way the the basic understanding of production, the way I can say that hey, look, I can create a particular fabric on three different kind of machines, possible, three different kind of cost, three different kind of consumption, three different kind of speeds. If I produce in plant A, the speed is different, plant B, the speed is different, but the fabric is same. Now, the, all those details has to come up. The solution has to have that facility, that configurability to fit to an organizational requirement, be it a spinner, be it a weaver, be it a garment. So coming to the technology deck, I will quickly come here. The software that I talked about is, uh, we have multiple software, I would say, within the product suite that we have. The ERP which takes care of uh, sales, purchase, planning, production, financials, costing is a web-based platform. And then we have certain added solutions which are specific for specific needs of the industry. And then we have got some applications which completes the whole bandwidth of what an organization requires, right from getting a customer inquiry to final shipment to doing the business analysis. Very quickly. The technology platform that we have is web-based. You can host on cloud, you can host on uh, on-prem servers, you can host it the way you want. Having sales, purchase, production, various modules. Now let us talk about uh, planning and production which, which, uh, which would be of interest to all of us. When we say planning, planning for us is divided into three aspects. One is the MRP planning where we calculate the material that is required in the quantity and for a particular quality for a particular sales order. While the sales orders can be of various kinds, the solutions that take care of this planning are capacity balancing, where we can balance our capacities in terms of multiple plants, having various capacities to manufacture a particular product type and then balance my availability of the plants across those uh, capacities. Right? Then we have scheduling solution, which takes care of aligning the best machine for a best uh, product. When we say aligning of, of a particular machine for a product, what do we mean by that? I said we have a same fabric which can be produced on three different machines. Now as a planner, as a scheduler, when I'm, I'm given an order and I'm a, I'm a loom planner sitting in a, uh, on a floor, I need to see what, are, what is my loom down status, what is my beam fall, what is the incoming product, do I have my, where it is good for drawing in or denting or uh, I do rebeaming, right? What is, the, what is the product that I have, I have at my hand? And then what are the looms that I have available? In the solutions that we have, when I say configurable, the config configurability comes here where you can decide, depending on your organizational rules, which kind of product would go on which kind of loom. It, it can be customer dependent. You can say hey, all the gap orders should go on loom number one, two, three, and seven. You can predefine that, right? You can decide that if the order length is this much, I should take this much of wastage or I, took, I should consider this much of shrinkages and system would calculate that and that would reflect here in the form of the raw material requirement for a particular job. So the solution that we are talking about is integrated from the MRP which calculates the material requirement to scheduling on a particular machine which can have multiple variabilities. We also have shop load, data recording and automation solution which is the industry 4.0 kind of solution that we would have where the software, the ERP can talk to the machines both ways to and fro, taking the data from the machine and giving the instruction to machine using direct PLC integrations. Now this can be achieved in various ways depending on the technology that the software, uh, the plant machines have. So I may have certain plants, uh, certain machines having PLCs which can give me the data or data can come in from microprocessors or data can come in from the software uh, that the loom or uh, circular knitting machines or spin data or loom data would have. We can integrate with multiple kind of uh, softwares or uh, machines that we have in the plant. And again, as I am saying, this can be done right from spinning to garmenting anywhere within the supply chain. Typical CAM applications are integrating with machine, taking data as you are seeing on the loom where I can, I can collect the data or I can use it for monitoring the machines across various stages, right? So giving that power of seeing what my machines are, whether they are running, where they are stopped, comes from solutions like this. 
We also have fabric, fabric inspection solution, which can be very interesting for denim manufacturers specifically. We saw uh, companies like Artistic Mill in Pakistan, they use this, apart from obviously other customers, but Artistic Mill specifically, and again PWA Denim in uh, Thailand, which use only this solution from our stable. Right, so sweet that I said can, is modular. We can deploy it the way you want. De depending on the fitment that you have, we can deploy that, that component of the particular suite and you can go ahead for it. So fabric inspection, what does it do? It optimizes your quality one yield. Once I have created a great fabric out of all the efforts that I have done from, from spinning, dyeing, finishing, I created a fabric, a big roll, and I need to cut that big roll into multiple small rolls and we, that's, that's what we were talking about. The cats, the, the new solution is cats. So what it does is op it optimizes all the fabric defects and advises you where you should cut your fabric so that you get maximum quality one yield, looking into all the customer requirements. What are these customer requirements? They can be minimum or maximum roll length, the splice allowance, the maximum four pointer defects, the weight of the roll. All these parameters are taken into the uh, software, algorithms are applied and they calculate what is the best area where you should cut your roll. We also have fabric uh, product development solution which can be used across textiles and uh, apparel solutions. So you, right from developing yarn to developing garments, we can use uh, the complete uh, product development solution which works again at multiple levels. I'm not going to get into it. Right. So with this stack of solutions that we have, um, and this is the end of uh, my presentation. I would like to uh, request if there are any queries and questions, would be happy to answer. Because you are telling about certain technology solutions which are uh, making it difficult to express the building cases. Between the fabric manufacturers suppress the government manufacturer. Right. Do you feel about computing technology? Will that use the issue so easily? So, okay. So you are talking to two different things. One is link. One is cloud. Cloud is the, where you host a particular solution. Cloud is only a hosting platform, yeah. right? So that's where the data is gonna go. But the the question of linking, the question of linking the fabric and the garments, yeah. fabric manufacturer and garment is definitely can be solved when both of them are talking the same language. Right. So when I'm supplying a fabric in a roll form to a garment manufacturer, right, I should be able to communicate the roles that I'm giving with roll numbers, with their defect point, with their quality levels, with their shade grouping, because denim is again known for shade groupings. And we were talking about in the row I have multiple but shades. But I know all these things because I have great cloud computing technology. I'm asking whether it will be a good proposition to address the issues. Yes, absolutely. Whether it will be cost effective? Cloud is obviously for cost effective where subscription modeling helps you uh, not to invest yes, into capex yes, immediately. Details, yes, or no, that yes, yes. That's okay. Next point is that you are talking about CAM and other technologies which are mostly using the precision in the industries. Because it is a little bit cost effective, I mean, uh, expensive return. Hmm. Such technology, whether it will be suitable for Indian industries, Absolutely, yes, sir. Vardhaman is our customer. I will just give you one example. Vardhaman is our customer. Vardhaman, everybody would be knowing from yarn to fabric. Now, we, I will give you one example and then we can take more examples. Shahi is our customer who is using CAMS very effectively. We have SCAPs in India and in US and then obviously other customers. Now, they, these solutions are very cost effective because there is absolutely, we don't have to be worried about the cost that it's bringing in. And frankly, it's not costly, first of all. Now with Vardhaman what we have done is, uh, they have an uh, automated warehouse, right? Automated warehouse is, is, a, is, a, is a robotic warehouse, right? Controlled by the robotic arms, where I can tell a particular, for a particular shipment of a particular customer, which all role needs to be picked up, right? And sent to a particular shipment. We give only one instruction from the uh, ERP and those roles are picked up and given for shipment or auto dosing or dispensing machines. I can design the recipes. We have been talking about recipes and water getting part of the element, uh, cost element. So recipes that I define in uh, data text can be pushed to the auto dosing and dispensing machine, which can be LA, which can be color service, which can be other text, etc., etc. From there, the dispensing would happen, and what has been actually dispensed, I would know to calculate my actual costing. So I do my standard recipe. I push that information based on the 
the size of the batch based on the MLRs. We were talking about multiple kind of uh, MLRs. I calculate all this calculation auxiliaries, give that and take the actual costing back. So that is definitely and that's happening today with uh, many Indian mills. How much you are getting response from the Indian? Very very interesting. We I can't reveal the name. We are working with someone. Yeah, I can I can I can tell you. Very very interesting. In fact, I would say that is the only thing that people are asking now. We talked about two kind of technology solution providers, right? Very generic and very specific and all. We have, we have, and we come from textiles. We understand textiles. We literally are from textiles. So, so now what happens is, now what happens is, these companies are specifically coming to us where we are saying they are saying that, look, I have a PW, I, I have a, let us say, worsted plant, right? I am using some solution. Now, can you help me integrate? these two components that my machine which are giving me data which is in the form of hand in this example I take the hand data understand what is the count convert the kgs and push the data to the other solution we use CAM only for this so CAM in itself can be deployed as a standalone solution or the automation piece so very very interesting examples we have and we are working across the board are you looking at marking patterns at the mill stage it's a Disruption when it can work, you know, when you work for a pattern, for a brand, let's say, Vardhaman, if just to take an example, yeah. you have to ship for Indian terrain in a particular color, could you in future or would you be looking at, you know, the roles marked with the pattern? Role marks with the pattern, we can look into it, right? I can I can tell you what we, we are doing or we can do rather, let us say it's in, in, in a stage where we are. I, I did a garment, uh, sorry, I, I manufactured a fabric. I know where defects points are placed because my solution is going to tell me LMR, left, middle, right, what is where the defect points are placed. I can tell the spreader, when I'm spreading in that particular roll on the, on the cutting room, I can tell spreader to go slow when there's a four point defect, when I know the spreading girl should watch it. So integration, what uh, Ramsar was saying that I take some information from mills and pass it on to the uh, garment cutter, yes, we can do that. Right, and similarly, putting markers on the fabric, I love to understand exactly what you mean by that. But yeah, if it is if it is possible technologically to put to identify the marker that you are going to put on the fabric, we can do that. Okay. I think because it will save a lot of time because any time a roll comes in, it gets inspected and then it goes for cutting and the cam is used again and the process the process can be like short. Yeah, can shorten. Yeah. It's like uh, when. Just to give you an example, in Benetton they used to pack in the factories for the stores globally. <coughs> That's a practice. So it's, it's something similar, you know, where you mark for the consumer at the factory shipment stage only his roles. Oh, marker as in that kind of marker, tagging a particular that is absolutely possible. Yeah. That is absolutely possible. We can tag the particular fabric role for a end customer you are saying so that I can manage my warehouses uh, easily right that is definitely possible that is one thing what I, I didn't mean that I meant was see every time there's a process involved when role goes sometimes it could not be inspected some could be inspected when you take it in and then obviously you lay it and then obviously you will mark the role so yeah. this can all be removed and it could be done in the yes it's kind of reinventing the wheel again so we can we can definitely go cut down all the all that if if both these solutions are going to talk about yeah if, if they are going to talk yes we can if it's on data text yes it definitely can i can tell you now it's possible yeah yes sir Europe has to be better. We have done better than the European. 
is there some test where like this data we can give to a consumer? This is one. Second, today maximum problem globally is the chemical in the laundry. If I have some MIS data where the report can come, you know, how much was really consumed? Or even if he has to ask more, it is not that you know I have to choose between the person and the chemical. The report should say yes, no, use take mark. Do you have some yeah. software or anything? Yeah, yeah. So uh, your first question, I, I couldn't uh, get exactly. Second question, the answer is yes. Uh, where we have uh, all these calculations of recipe, as I mentioned, depending on the product, and it can be as uh, we were we were talking about the variability. When we say, if a same product, I have two laundries are in two different places, and both of them have different pH levels of water, and so I need different kind of chemicals in both the levels. Solution by default can understand this, that if I am planning in plant A, the same product I am planning in plant B, my MLRs or calculation should be different, One number one. Number two, when actual release of the chemicals is done, system keeps a track of it, it can control also. It can say that no, you are not allowed or it can give authority and all those controls are there. So you can do that and then you actually take that information and calculate the actual cost that you have incurred on that particular batch. We talked about we talked about reprocess. We uh, I touched upon the reprocessing also. There also this is required. Where in reprocessing, how much reprocessing you did, what material you received, and what was the costing of it. So at all the levels, the costing is possible. So you have the software. Yes, absolutely. <coughs> First question was, for example, where we do most testing. Pigs index in Brazil is coming to sixty. Hmm. But in the European, it's not coming to sixty. Okay. But the buyer is not believing. How oh, can so Okay, but no, we, we are not into business of managing the data uh, from or benchmarking the data. We don't do the data benchmarking. So we can leave it to the customer who already has it and we can do some research on that. But as a business model, we are not into benchmarking the uh, data points. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. How do you think AI can help you in the future? AI can definitely help. Uh, in, in various ways, we can take one example. We can take one example, let us say... Uh, the data sometimes is <coughs> or something was not planned, or something was add on. So, the many things. At the parallel time, there are a lot of RFID functions are also happening. Yes. So, how, will it be uh, possible for connecting retail and manufacturing related to the that's, that's already happening. In some sense, it's already happening. Now, where, where, whether we're talking about connecting the end consumer and manufacturing, that's a big question because there's a long way to go. But as far as retail connected to manufacturing, it's already out there. right? That's that's already happening. Coming to the AI part of it, AI has an immense amount of role to play in, in textiles and apparels also. Where, depending on the kind of loom productions that I have, built, let us talk about weaving only. Okay, let us talk about the warp breakages that I was getting up from a particular kind of yeah, let us say. If I have an AI platform, okay, where I have been curating this data about which supplier, supplier can be ABC, yarn manufacturer, which kind of blend, which kind of product, let us say 11 ounce denim I am doing on this loom. If I consistently gather that data and put into my AI engine, AI engine can predict the model next time that if you are using this supplier, this is the yarn count, if you if you are doing this ounce denim in let us say uh, 2 upon down to this will be your, will be your warp breakage and hence you should cost your product this much. It can completely do and tell you that what should be the cost of your product. And some part of it, we already do it. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. So we would like to request uh, Mr. Prashant Sarkar to give a uh, memento to Mr. Rahul Mahajan. So moving on now, I would like to invite Mr. B.K. Mohanty, Sales Director and Country Head for MathPy in India. Uh, he downs the role of a consultant for finishing line in suits and jacket manufacturing units. A science graduate with post-graduation in fashion management. Mr. Mohanty has been about 25 years of experience in apparel machinery industry which covers the sewing and finishing equipments broadly. He has participated in many national and international seminars and exhibitions and also he is a visiting faculty in many institutes related to the garment industry. 